Well, here's part of my dash. I've been trying to figure out a place for the scanner in here. And after seeing a couple of guys with forerunners and scanners in them from radio reference, they said it's a very tight fit, so I figured I wasn't trying hard enough. So I got the um, the scanner in the bottom part of the bracket, and then I had to use um, different holes for the head unit so I could get that to fit in there as well. But the head unit is further forward than the scanner is just because of the holes that I had to use. I can't use the same set but further back because of I have a depth issue. I can't have the head unit any further back. So basically the front of the head unit is hitting right on the bottom of this post right here. So it's um, at the bottom of this post is the very top of the uh, the CD tray well it's not really a tray but you know what I'm saying the CD slot so measuring that from the top of the slot to the um, the top of the radio the head unit is approximately this much I don't know if you can see it but there's a little lip here you can see this post is standing up, that's for structure. And then you have that little lip on there. So you gotta trim down that lip. There, you can see it right there. I have to trim down that lip. And then hopefully it'll fit. If not, I'm gonna have to take out that little post right there. So I'll get back to you when that's all done. Try to get the light here good so you can see this. Now close up it looks pretty rough, it kinda is, but when you're looking down on it like that inside a car where the front of the head unit is sticking out, it's not even going to be noticeable. Try to get good focus here. I'll show you the back in a minute. I haven't test fitted it yet. Hopefully it works and then I'll clean this up a bit because that's all the dust right there. I was just using the Dremel with the sander on it. I apologize for it being so dark, but this is what I was working with. Couldn't really see anything. I don't have any better lighting to use. So yeah, I went right up against that post. Now I'm going to test fit it, see if it works. Well, I will be damned, it fits. It was very, very tight to get this panel back on. I actually had to push up from the bottom and then click the bottom in to get it up past the top of the radio. I thought I was going to have to trim it again, but my measurements were good. That's all I had to do. I know it looks a little bit shitty, but I don't care. I got my scanner now. Now I just got to wire it up. I pulled the, uh, the inline wire. This one goes from the back instead of having, or um, they both go from the back, but instead of having the cigarette lighter charger, this is just um, three wires. I'll show you right here. They both the positive and the negative, positive ground I should say, have inline fuses. Sorry about that camera got caught there. And there is an orange wire that is for your dimmer switch. So like you can see the clock right there. Pretty dim even though it's on. Apologize for the sand have my windows open going down this really dusty road. When I turn on the uh, the marker lights, it gets very dim. And that's basically what it does with the scanner. The uh, buttons and the screen will both dim 
according to whatever you get your vehicle's settings at. So, like, I can take this and turn it even dimmer all the way to off. You can do that. It'll be hooked in with the scanner as well. Now, my radio doesn't do that. Just a scanner. I'm not going to hook that up. Just because, frankly, I'm not going to use it. It would, it would be a little too much work for me to splice wires. I have to figure out where I'm going to run these to. Yeah, I'll get this all dressed up again. And then show you how it looks finished. It's still going to be a little bit dusty, but you get the idea. Well, here it is. All completely put back together. I tried to wipe this down for you guys, but oops, forgot the uh, four-wheel drive knob. But yeah, to do this, I had to have it out of gear the whole time. So I had it up against a embankment because e-brake don't work for nothing. But here's how it looks. Looks pretty clean, just. If I can get this hooked up now, that would be nice. Just got those two wires. I'm going to have to take this all back apart again when I get the antenna, because I don't have one. This is just hooked up to nothing right now. The car antenna won't work for it because the connector is different and because, well, quite frankly, it's snapped off. So, got to figure out what band of antenna I want. Got to figure out what frequency we use the most. I, well, I mean, I know which we always use, but thinking maybe of going dual antenna, different bands. We use, uh, we use all sorts of bands. So, I'll just figure out what I'm going to do for that. Get that hooked up. Then I can run this. But for now, I'm going to see how well it does without an antenna see if I can hear anything I mean I can still hear Alabama from here with a crappy little stock antenna this one I can get Alabama better than Connecticut a little bit strange but yeah it looks pretty good first custom well I wouldn't really call it custom but it's not stock anymore so I'll put this on uh, T4R for you guys, if any of you guys are wondering, because I know I sure was. It wasn't until I found a couple of threads on radio reference this morning that I got inspired to do this. So I'll put this up there, maybe a quick little write-up, I'll see. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know.